Hi, everybody. It's that gratitude guy with the gratitude podcast interview regarding the pandemic. And I'm with one of my closest friends today, Mark Davis. Good afternoon, Mark. How are you? Hello, David. Doing well, thanks. How are you? Yeah, just doing fantastic. Enjoying the technology, as we know. It yes, are, yes, it really does work. It's working better and better. So tell me, the whole purpose of this is for me to interview people that I know well, to get a perspective, and then send that out to my subscribers and YouTube followers and email list and so forth to maybe get a tip or something that might help other people as we go through this unprecedented time. So I've got three questions for you. And the first question is, is what is your best coping mechanism to deal with this pandemic? Probably being with family, you know, being with family together and sharing stories about the past and you know what our plans are for the future and really being face to face with them has been probably the best. And then outside of that, talking with people that I know that are in a similar situation that are also facing the struggles we face together. So just the sharing of, of common stories and bond is probably the best uh, uh, source of, of relief I've had in the, through this experience. And it's interesting too, because that's a great comment. And yet, isn't it interesting with social distancing that we want to be close to our family, but not too close. And so hence a Zoom call like this or FaceTime or any of those other things, just the regular phone even to connect. But it is kind of strange to be somewhat more at a distance than we're used to in the past. And I mentioned something the other day about somebody should hug somebody. I thought, no, 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 you can't hug them. So, so, but family, obviously very important. So, so great point. So second question. So during these uncertain times, what are you most grateful for? I think friends and family more, more than anything else, just the people that have been important in my life and the people that continue to be, um, play a huge role in, in what I'm most grateful for. So really the personal connection and the uh, history of people and then the planning for the future. Yeah. So really being, being with people is the most important thing I'm grateful for. And planning for the future is really true too, because when you think about, I have a feeling that like a lot of us, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to have a tough time and the financial pressure and, and uh, possibly uh, depression and anxiety and so forth. And a lot of what that comes down to is a four letter word called hope. So when you've got things you're, you're hopeful for and looking for in the future, uh, it gives you something to look forward to. And, and uh, I've said many times that I sometimes think life is just a series of looking forward to things that we get to, you get to go play a tennis match and get to play them again tomorrow or whatever. It's something to look forward to. So, so a good point. And so a third and last question, do you have a quote or a philosophy that kind of sustains you through a time like this? Well, one of my favorites of all time is you never completely fail till you blame someone else. Mm. And so as you think about, you know, who, who's responsible for this, who's responsible for that, I think it does really elevate the idea that if you want to be responsible for something, go ahead and take responsibility for it. But don't blame anyone else. Yeah. If something comes up and, and, and you absorb that, that concern, you know, it sort of goes away. Yeah. Yeah. And in this time, you know, none of us is responsible for this. So we all have each other to uh, work toward in, in getting a result that will be favorable and that will happen. We will pull through this and it might take longer than we think. But in the, in the perspective of things, it will be solved in a, in a reasonable amount of time. It's a great point. And I think that uh, I had somebody mention this to me earlier I thought was really good is sometimes it takes something of this magnitude to make us appreciate what we have and kind of not appreciating high until you see low. And this is certainly going to be low, but at the same time, maybe giving us some silver linings of things, more time with family, as you had mentioned earlier, or different things that maybe we didn't do. I've done a bunch of cleanup projects I was never going to do, but I did because I've got the time. So it's amazing what can come out of the, uh, the ashes where the Phoenix can sometimes rise up and, and uh, give us a better view. So, well, very good. Well, thank you so much. For, one, one, one final yes. thing is that mm -hmm. um, people have often put off some of their estate planning and trust planning that is the business I'm in. Mm -hmm. So what I'm finding during this period is people have time to think that through mm. and go ahead and finish up their documents. They've been sitting on them for a long time and now they're completing them. So it's a good time to reflect on that and make those lifelong decisions that often are, are, are not done because you're too Great busy point. during the regular day. Great point. Perfect example of finding a silver lining in something that uh, maybe never gets handled. Now it gets done, and then I'm sure later on they're glad they got it done. So, 
-hmm. Excellent points. Well, thank you so much. And uh, Pleasure, Dave. Thanks, thanks you, for asking me. You bet. You bet. And for all of you uh, out there, just stay tuned for more special guests. But uh, this is the Gratitude Guy and just always my favorite line. Remember, be grateful and, and never, never quit. quit. Thank you, Mark.